to Mr. Obsley's finished homesteading. Well, today's video is going to start out with mowing the lawn with our vintage lawn boy here. It's a 19 inch. It's made in 1974. And I found this in a junkyard. It was kind of an interesting deal because I went over and looked at it and you know, it looked complete and pulled on the re recoil there and it didn't work. So I thought, well, Something's busted, the engine's bad or something on it. But anyway, the guy that owned the junkyard come over and I said, well, what do you want for it? I can use it for parts. And he said, well, let me check it out. And he pulls a starter cord. So all the engine's no good. You can have it for 12 bucks. So I bought it and it was probably 35 years ago. Been using it ever since. And uh, all it was wrong is the, they have a drive system. It has a screw like that and, and got a debris in it. And, oil and stuff and you know made it so it didn't work anymore. I just took it off and cleaned it, cleaned the carburetor, put a new plug in it, and been using it ever since. And uh, anyway, I like using two-stroke lawnmowers. One, I like the sound of them, plus they're vintage. And almost a zero maintenance on them. So I have uh, the fuel in it from last year. I always use non-alcohol fuel. And so these are low compression and low horsepower. So even if your fuel has deteriorated a little bit and the octane isn't as high as it used to be, it doesn't seem to affect them. They just start and run anyway. So the thing that I do before I put them away, I sharpen the blade and clean the deck out. And then the wheels, when I get them ready to come out here, get a plastic hub. You can see these spin nice and free people that don't lubricate them and just wear out so I use chain lube on them motorcycle chain lube and put it down on the hubs here and the thing that's why I use that is it goes on like an oil and then as it sets up it turns into a light grease so you can put it on the wheel on the hub there spin it and you can just see how nice that is. It goes through and lasts for a long time. So anyway, let's see how easy it starts. So turn on the fuel. Now one thing that these have, the carburetor on this is plastic and on the float ball there's a little drain cock on it and so I've already drained it. If it has any fuel left over or it leaks by the valve over the winter, I just hold it open and put a paper towel under it and take all the fuel out of it and then let the fresh fuel come in. So anyway, it says an ignition switch here. It has a primer bulb. It doesn't have a choke. So you, get a, you press this about a dozen times. says put foot right here Well, you can see that pulling this back and forth, you can see the lawn is really rough. The one thing on the lawn boys, they have this staggered front wheels that keeps it from scalping. They used that from 1954 until a few years before they phased out the two strokes. So anyway, we've got a lot more stuff coming up.
I'm going to talk about a number of different things here. Do maintenance on your stuff. You know, chainsaws and old lawnmowers and small engines, you know, they sit a lot. And, you know, people get them out and they'll run them for a little while and then they quit. You know, go check this and that and the other and start up and run good again. So the most common failure that people miss a lot of times are the fuel caps. Look here real close, you can see a small hole in there in the center. And that's a vent that lets air in. So you can see down inside here there's two holes too so that that keeps the fuel in but lets the air in also. But there's a couple of examples here. When I first got uh, Mr. Pooh here, because you know what it's made out of, it's a pulling wild thing or mild thing in stock form. And it was kind of an anomaly because this is one of the few that ran for a long time. It had enough use that the uh, bar was worn pretty badly and the clutch drum teeth were pretty well gone. And then when it quit running, it got put away and I inherited it. But so first thing I had to do is rebuild the fuel system and the thing that's weird on these is that yeah they sold zillions of them and this and an early one had a Zama carburetor on it which is one of the major brands but they don't sell any parts for them and the new carburetors aren't available and so I looked around trying to find a kit and I found a place that you know using the model number off the carburetor and everything and I ordered a kit only about less than half the parts would actually fit I went through my junk boxes and found a had some old Walbro stuff that fit it and I actually got it running and then anyway the one thing I'm talking about was the fuel vent on it and the fuel caps on these have a little built-in valve that's called a duckbill valve that's right here and then there's a small hole in the center here and so as the chainsaw draws the fuel in and stuff it creates a vacuum in the tank and that little valve which is shaped kind of like that uh, opens up and lets the air in but it keeps the fuel inside the tank and so it just pulses when it needs it and this was bad because once I got the fuel system rebuilt and got other bugs figured out on it and stuff it would run for a bit and quit and so I ended up putting a cap on it and then I got it to run quite well this had the exact same problem had to replace the cap on this one too this is a super low hour maybe four or five hours total use on it before I got it but there again you know the these things had a lot of issues. You can go back and watch my old videos. I've done lots of videos on these. And you see all the crazy stuff you got to do. Because the thing that there's a lot of interest in these. They have them at the shows and stuff. They have contests with them. They hop them up and do all kinds of crazy stuff to them. And you know, hot rodding's alive. But these things are so cheaply built that once I get this to run and perform really good, the crank failed on it which is a common problem because I was given three part saws, two wood sharks like this one and another wild thing and two out of the three had bad cranks on them so the main bearings are fitted into a plastic cage and it atrophies and leaks air and then they blow up so this one when it quit the, the bore seems to be pretty good so this will be an upcoming project pretty soon I'm going to take it apart and see if we can salvage it because the bearings and stuff are available well here's just another minor rant about aftermarket parts this uh, the wood carp here has a two barrel carburetor so you got primary here and a secondary here and there's a like I say I couldn't find a new carburetor for it that was an original one the only thing you can find is a crummy Chinese ones and you know, some people say, hey, they work fine, and I don't know. 
So this was my only option. So I sent off and got it, and it was cheap. And the two things that are, I didn't like about it, one, the saw doesn't have as good a performance as it did with the original carburetor. But the other thing is, is right here, this little metal linkage right here, that operates your part of the throttle. Well, the thing that's different on this carburetor is that that little metal rod would hit inside the case here. And so I actually drilled a little hole for it for the rod to poke through, but it was still hitting. So I actually just uh, checked the distance that it moved and whatnot, and I just removed a little bit of the end of the rod there and bent it over and it clears now and I plug the hole back up because it would be a direct air leak. Let sawdust in and stuff. But anyway, it's just uh, terrible the situation we're in and trying to get good stuff these days. But it's just a part of the you know lawnmower shops and having trouble getting parts. I saw one video here recently where they've been waiting for a steering shaft off a common MTD mower had been on back order for a year and it was a model that they still sold right at the same time that he was working on it and so there's just no excuse for this stuff but anyway the, the wild thing here I'll be taking it apart and see if I can save it pretty soon and this one I'm gonna do some modifications on it which I did on this the other saw here and it really improved the performance so there's hope yet but like I say again going back to fuel caps this would fit a Briggs and Stratton or a Clinton or Tecumseh and the, there's three little holes right here it lets the air in again there's a gasket like in here and so if it has a single hole in the top I just do blow through them and it blows through fine if not, I take some brake cleaner or carburetor cleaner and put in it. And it goes right through there. But, um, just, uh, just, just kind of a compendium of different things. I want to talk about aftermarket parts. My neighbor has an old Craftsman lawnmower that has a twin cylinder Kohler engine. It's given really, really good service over the years. And last fall the starter failed on it, so I bought a new starter for it. And this thing probably had maybe a couple of dozen starts. And went to start it this recently here. It started to spin up and it locked up and started making some really weird noises. So anyway, just to show you what crummy junk you get these days inside of here it's a permanent magnet starter and they fit in here and they put just a little teeny bit of glue in them and the glue failed and the armature came around and caught the edge of it and broke up the magnet and junked it out and you can't buy replacement parts for them so it's just a part of the deal today you know you could used to buy good stuff but not anymore junky stuff from China. This is another one. When I received this it was a non-runner and I did a video on how I got it running and whatnot and talked about the problems with it. But the, one of the things that was really messed up on it was the the fuel cap, the duck valve, duck bail valve was completely missing on it so it leaked fuel out and then the o-ring that was on it uh, was cracked and whatnot so I bought a replacement cap for it an aftermarket one because I couldn't find any new ones from still they won't sell, they haven't sold them for years even though they sold millions of saws and power equipment that had this same gas cap on it it's not available so anyway I put the new aftermarket cap on it and as soon as I filled it with gas and let it sit for a few days the o-ring seal on here swelled up split because it wasn't designed to be around fuel. It's the wrong kind of material. And then the duck bill valve in here leaked. So I had a, I bought a different brand and so far it's been okay. But 
it's really disgusting to the way things are trying to find stuff. That's why so many of these old saws and engines and stuff get junk because you buy stuff to fix them and it lasts for a week or two and then it's time for the junkyard. We'll talk about something good. It's my first two-in-one chainsaw file which I've talked about in the last video, video quite a bit. And I re just recently replaced the files on it. I thought it would, I'd replaced them I got this thing two years ago. I actually went back and had to watch my own old video to find out I bought this three years ago. And so I'd actually used these same files for three years before they to the point where they wouldn't cut very good anymore. And you know the German furb files are the best I've ever found. So but anyway, what do you do with old files? Well, if they're not totally destroyed, these are still semi-usable. And sharpen them and I did a video on how to sharpen files and stuff using vinegar and so these will be back in operation but they won't be doing any real heavy duty cutting like in the, on the chainsaw chains and stuff but, you know, it's for general purpose filing and stuff they'll be plenty usable for years to come so use what you have and since our last video was on chainsaw sharpening and how we got our bell saw chainsaw grinder in operation. This is the first chain that I ground on it. It was a learning experience and whatnot, but anyway, I had taken this over to do a little bit of work, finish up work on that great big tree that we did the four videos on just recently. And underneath the bark in between the tree, there was rocks and I, I damaged three chains. This was one of them and I, I caught it before it did any real serious damage and you know the one I had on the still 051 was so badly damaged I had to take it to a shop and have them grind it for me because I hadn't set up the, my own grinder yet but anyway I took this saw over which is a McCulloch Promax 650 and about the last 10 or 12 feet of the, that great big tree I'd use the 075 and the 051 to do the major cuts. They were about two thirds of the way through, but I needed to roll the tree to do the finish cuts. And I got smart enough to remove the bark so I didn't hit any more rocks. And like I say, I, I've never seen a tree that had rocks underneath the bark between the wood and the bark, but this thing had quite a few of them. And anyway, I did a sharpening on this thing, and well, that's, that's really impressive. So. Anyway, I'm going to run it here for you before too long because I don't have any trees down right now. But, boy, the amount of chips coming out of this thing were really good because, yeah, I run skip tooth. You know, and they don't put out as many chips as a, when you've got a full house, you've got a cutter on every link there. But, like I say, it was pretty darn impressive. So, anyway, when we get ready, we'll do some video on that and show you why that sort of thing is so such an upgrade for us so anyway well it's a, coming up the 4th of July so remember history is important and vintage is best and we'll see you on the next video next Tuesday mm -hmm.